welcome to Queen Anne's County School Board meeting for Wednesday, December the 1st, 2021. Uh, do I have a motion to go into closed session? Uh, I move to go into closed session according to uh, provisions in Article 3-305 and 3104 for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction. Any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice or to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. I have a motion. Do I have a second? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll be back at 6 o'clock for our regular meeting. Thank you. Welcome to the Queens County Board of Education School Board meeting for Wednesday, December the 1st, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. This is our first meeting of December, and we will have election of board officers. Uh, I will open the floor for a nomination for president. Mm -mm. Dr. Salins. Um, President Point of order, Mr. Mr. Smith. Dr. Salins well, asks open, open support okay. I'm sorry. for a nomination of President. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I stuck my open bounds. <laughs> entertain a motion for um, I, president. I would uh, nominate Mark Schifanelli for president. Okay, we have one nomination on the floor. I'd like to nominate Richard Smith for president. We have two nominations on the floor. At this time, if everyone would please vote and pass your ballots down. President will remain um, Mr. Smith. We have three votes for Mr. Smith. Okay, hey, thank you. And if I will entertain a motion for Vice President. I would like to nominate uh, Helen Bennett. I just have one nomination on the floor. I'd like to nominate Tammy Harper. I have two nominations on the floor. Please vote and pass your ballots down. And we have three votes for Mrs. Harper. Mrs. Harper will be the new vice president for the board for the next year. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Okay, our next, so I'm still president. Our next administrative thing will be approval of the agenda. Mr. Smith, may I please make a motion to amend the agenda to include 10.6 Skyline Solution, Technology Solutions. 10.7 Ford Transit Connect STB, 10.8 WB Mason, 10.9 Raid Tree Services, and to remove 8.04 informational item from this agenda. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? To speak to my motion, Mr. Smith, we just received uh, these action items uh, this evening. Um, they need to be put into purchase order for uh, Ms. Towers to be exp you know, expedited. And uh, 804, we, uh, all the board members are requesting more information on this informational item, which we hope will be added to the January meeting. Any further discussion? Yeah, I would just like to say that uh, we do appreciate the staff for putting that uh, 801 together. Um, and uh, because we did ask for it, 804, sorry. Um, so it is appreciated. We are going to put it on, uh, hopefully, with about uh, first thing in January. So thank you, staff. Okay. I have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the amended agenda? Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, you've had a chance to look at the approval minutes for November the 17th work session. 
Has everybody had a chance to look at those? Yes. Mr. Smith, may I uh, make a motion to approve November 17th, 2021 clo closed work session and open work session minutes? Second. Uh, motion, yeah, you're, you're approving both yes, closed sir, and I'm open at the same time. Yes, I'm making a motion to approve both. Okay, has everybody had a chance to look at both closed and open? Yes. 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 So motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Salen, do you have recognitions? We do have a lot of recognitions. We're excited. Is the board going to? The board, yes. Good. And if we could please have Mr. Bell. Energizer Bunny, this award is given to a staff member who, or volunteer who keeps on going. It is sponsored by our Bayview Financial. We're grateful for their partnership with Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys. They here this evening? They were not able to make it, okay. So, um, Mr. Michael Bell is our sponsor for this Energizer Bunny, and we'd like to invite up Mr. Rick Strickmater. Strickmater, thank you. This award is being presented to Rick, who is the executive director of the Queen Anne's County Center of Arts. Rick has been a steady mover and a shaker within the arts scene in Queen Anne's County and a strong partner with Mr. Bell, helping make things happen for students and teachers alike in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Most recently, Rick hosted all the county art teachers at the first annual faculty art exposition, which helped keep Bell's message of stay an artist going for the fine arts teachers even during COVID. He teamed up with Mr. Bell at legislative sessions across the state, fighting for the arts and the necessary funding and supporting students in schools by providing annual scholarships that are earned every year. Aside from all the projects that he has worked in, he also makes time for bi-monthly power lunches to invent new ways to keep our visual and performing arts programs in the foreground here in Queen Anne's County. This is why Rick is the epitome of the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps on going and going, and it is an incredible advocate for the arts. So thank you so much. Oh yes, please do. Please yes. do. Please do. Yes. You can't stop your smiling anyway. <laughs> Miss Bennett, could you scoot just one more the other, please? Thank you so much. Okay, I can see everybody. Ready? One more. Thank you. Michael to stay up here because he is our sponsor this evening. Our next award is the Shining Star Award. This award recognizes someone in our school system who shines and this award today goes to Miss Kimberly Adams. If we could have her come up please. This award is being presented to Kim, who is the Administrative Secretary for Visual and Performing Arts, Whole Language, School Library Media, in addition to Title I and Title IV, ELA, K-12, Migrant, and EL in the Department of Curriculum Instruction. <laughs> Do that with the mask on, right? <laughs> that title alone is not for the faint of hearts. For the past four years, Ms. Adams has been a steady rock to the entire department. She goes above and beyond, often over late nights or weekends, literally doing whatever it takes 
um, to immerse herself in her job in order to keep the entire ship moving forward as efficiently as possible. Due to her being in charge of the supporting staff so many areas, she's had to become an expert in many arenas, but she's never shied away from learning and growing. In this profession, it's always about teamwork, but not just the kind of teamwork you'd see as a quote on a poster. She embodies the behind the scenes teamwork that truly helps keep an office that's incredibly thin, pulled together in so many different directions to thrive almost effortlessly. Thanks, and, and that's thanks to her strength of hers and go-getter attitude. As someone who can trust and be depended on, as someone who is always shining. While Kim has been recognized as the Energizer Bunny in the past, she also is well-deserving this month of the Shining Star. So congratulations. I do. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just like to take a, a second to um, thank the team of uh, performing arts and also um, fine arts and everybody else. The other 19 hats that I wore. Um, yeah, it, it's been awesome. Everybody's been awesome, and. Um, I was that little train that could, and I did. Oh. So, and I want to shout out to my son, David, who's watching me from Alabama. Oh, This award is given to an individual or a group of individuals who embody the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And this month we'd like to focus in on the Queen Anne's County Public School Performing Art Teachers. This award is presented to the performing arts teachers who have stepped up and created opportunities for students to perform again in front of the public. These teachers have stepped up to immerse challenges, immense challenges, excuse me, to ensure our programs have been seen and heard, and so kids are able to sing, dance, act, march, and compete in band again. For Constitution Day and Veterans Day performances to outdoor pop-up performances with our new middle school music and theater art classes, our teachers rose to the occasion. Dance shows have been performed for the state. Theater auditions for future plays and musicals have started, and collaboration among chorus, band, and dance programs at both high schools have been outstanding. We've had a spectacular Halloween performance, <laughs> an outdoor mini musical at both ends of the district. Our high school marching bands also got back out there to compete. Mr. Wright and the Marching Lions earning awards at the Tournament of Bands, and Mrs. M Mogensen <laughs> with her marching um, buccaneers performing in the pouring rain at the Maryland State Championship. And with more upcoming winter concerts and Christmas parades are in the works, these teachers truly demonstrate the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public School System, and it's why the 2020 Queen Anne's County Public School was awarded one of the 2020 Best Communities for Music Education, a national honor that only 754 districts nationwide achieved, and only one of six Six districts selected in the state of Maryland. It's thanks to all of their hard work and dedication, and the show must go on. Thank you for helping keep our 2021-2022 performance season alive and well. Yeah, and, and there would be more, yet there's a performance going on no, tonight at Queen Anne. Yeah. There's a dance two. show at Ken Island. Yeah, two so, shows, yep, two. So, but we have some of them here. And so, we do have some Yes, yeah, so I'd like to call, it, sure. call you up one by one, and I will hand them to you, and you can read them. Heather Eflin? Sure. Heather Eflin? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take a picture. My family's coming yeah. up. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And is Andrew McIntyre here? No, I don't think okay. so. Megan Murphy.
Betsy Babylon. Thank you so much. Ron Demby. Mr. Demby, thank you very much. Thank you. For everything. Amy Benfield. Amy, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie Dean. Wendy Broadwater. <laughs> and Erica's gotten married since knocking off, so Erica Bell. <laughs> Kristen Tyler. And I believe the last one, Monica White. Did I miss anyone? The rest of them are out performing. So. Okay. <laughs> You guys, oh, I was gonna sleep behind you. Awesome. Watch it. Watch the first one. I didn't realize that. Not her first radio. I'm so sorry. Let us know what's good. We should have the wifey spot center. <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Yeah, there. Okay. Everyone could look right here, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. so much because yeah. I'm just not very talented in them so I just so appreciate their uh, it's just very very good congratulations <laughs> See you, Rob. Okay. Moving on. Uh, board involvement. Alan, you want to? Sure. I'll start. Um, first, I just wanted to say that our thoughts and my prayers are with the community of Oxford, Michigan, um, with the horrific um, loss of the four lives. I believe it's four lives, the physical injuries, the emotional devastation. Um, definitely will keep you in my prayers. Um, regarding um, Mr. Bell, he was he referenced a couple of the uh, some putting a plug in tonight. At, if you're if you're tired of watching us, we're filmed. You can watch us anytime. The uh, Ken Island is the dance showcase, and at Queen Anne's County is the, the winter concert. If you can make them at seven o'clock, I did watch Mr. Bell's Arts Advocacy 101, and it was so impressive. Um, it's well worth it. Just it's amazing what our it's it's no wonder you guys got the Spirit Award. It's amazing what the arts program is doing in Queen Anne's County. And then oh 
and I'm looking forward to Dr. Salen's reading um, on the 10th of, of December to the students. Oh, I've been out and reading it about, so are you gonna come join me? Yes, I'm oh, hoping awesome. to, not to read, but to listen, so. Yeah, um, sure, absolutely, yes. you're more than welcome. And it's nice to see our student um, board yeah. members today. Very nice to see them both. That's it. All right, just like to uh, put out that the Church of Latter-day Saints in Kent Island and uh, in conjunction with uh, Anne Arundel County, they started collecting uh, backpacks with uh, school supplies and they had 50 that they donated to uh, Southersville Elementary. So thank you for that. And that's all I have. <laughs> You know, Janet, have you been? I know you're just with us recently, <laughs> but I know you've been involved with some things, but uh, not anything, not anything just yet. But give me time. Okay. Open meeting docs. Oh, we finished all of the open meeting docs. So. Yeah, you just I you did. did. I saw that. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Docs, so that's so a big deal. You're yeah. qualified to keep us straight. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Thank, Thank you. you. It's very important that we have members that are. Uh, certified in open meetings. Yeah. Thank um, I had a huge shout out to Amber Wright and Kevin Reagan from Kent Island. Uh, I ran into Miss Wright. She goes, I knew better than to schedule the winter concert in the first Wednesday of the month. I knew better. So anyway, shout out to them. Break a leg. Um, as the calendar year comes to an end, uh, I, I believe the board members would agree with me that we would like to thank all the businesses and individuals who donate their time and money to QACPS on behalf of our community's children. Um, a lot of these pro extra programs, extra perks that we have, going on, the character counts, coaches, so many people, and we just would like to thank every one of them. Um, maybe we can get them put up on the website. Just just a, a special thank you for being involved with our children. So thank you. Okay. Um, I been around but not doing anything really important. Dr. Sure, absolutely. So I had um, was able to finish um, my first meetings with the advisory groups at the secondary level, the student advisory groups, and um, were able to gather some really good themes from them and some things that we can work on. I met with principals last Friday, I believe it was, not last Friday, um, last Tuesday or something. I met with principals concluding those, <laughs> and we talked about the themes and some things that we could do to, um, you know, to fulfill some of the requests that came up in, within the meetings. It was delightful to be with the students, and so that led me into uh, not being able to get into the elementary schools for student advisory groups, so reading to elementary students, as Mrs. Bennett had um, referred to. So I've started that schedule. It's exciting. I love it, going in, and, and reading with the littles is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and we've begun the budget process, which is a very um, long and tedious process, and so um, we've started that process just to let everybody know that uh, we'll be working hard to come out with a, a really solid budget that will support the needs here in Queen Anne's County. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy Fudok is not here this evening. She's, I think, under the weather. She is, uh, and so we're gonna. Dr. Kibler is gonna. He's gonna help, help um, to get that presented up there. Um, as always, basically, um, the snapshot, the spotlight snapshot, really just kind of captures some of the things that we're doing here. We're gonna start off with the elementary schools. And the first elementary school will be based on elementary school. You'll see that here they did a food drive in November, which is amazing because they came up with almost 2,400 pounds of food. So very noteworthy. Um, they did some PBIS events during um, the month of November as well, which included the turkey trot. Um, and they actually taped their principal to the wall. So <laughs> I'm sorry that you missed that. It was very exciting uh, having a, a good, good fun there. Going on to Centerville Elementary School, um, their second grade class sang at the commissioner's meeting, which is very awesome. And they have a theme, obviously, this year for kindness. They've received some grant monies for that, so they've started off um, with their kindness kickoff spirit week, and you can see some of the things that they did there. Um, Moving on to Churchill Elementary School, they established the club, the club time, and this is time for students to be in small groups to get some individualized attention for areas that they need to focus on. Um, so that's really good that they have that up and running and students were excited to participate. At Graysonville, you can see here that um, they basically um, really st took a hard focus on Veterans Day and showed support there. You can see that the students raised a total of $1,200, which went directly to help for veterans at uh, Perry Point Medical Center, so that was exciting. And on the right-hand side, you can see they also did a food drive there as well. 
Kennard Elementary School, they're leaping in the zone. You can see their um, bulletin board there, where they're integrating the zones of regulation. So being able to understand where you are, um, trying to get to that green zone to be open and ready um, to be able to learn. The Tigers are um, also have a new wall up, and you can see that's for positive traits um, and verbs that students display. So a very much of a growth mindset that they're focusing on there. And they also did American Education Week, where they created a thank you wall. And this was really awesome, where the staff, um, they could put notes in for staff members to thank them. So I thought that was a really, really creative idea. For Canal and Elementary School, you can see here that um, they, they also recognize the National Education Week. Um, first graders were experimenting and exploring with sound. The Tooth Fairy came and did the Tooth Fairy Takeover, which is always fun. And um, what's the matter, which is obviously science, looking at your solids and your liquids and your gases. They did an art showcase as well um, at the animal shelter. And at Mattapeak Elementary School, they also did um, food items, um, feed the families for local drive. And you can see there are 1,570 items that were collected. So giving back to the community. At Settlersville Elementary School, they took a hard focus on Veterans Day as well. And you can see they created bulletin boards and they had memorabilia out. Um, they had hosted a retired Air Force veteran to speak. Um, so you can see the kids really had some interactive opportunities with, with people and that was really fun. Moving on to the middle schools. We'll start with Centerville Middle School, a, a focus on American Education Week. They created a video, um, well worth the watch. And you can see there on November 5th, staff and students enjoyed some very perfect weather outside, which is well deserved to go out and, um, and just really have some fun competitions there. And then they made handmade apples and displayed them in the seventh grade pod to recognize our teachers. At Mattapeak Middle School, they really enjoyed their fall bash, which was hosted by the PTSA. So you see some students there enjoying outside fun. And at Stevensville Middle School, their eighth grade undertook a design challenge. So they had to construct um, hand warmers devices. So a very cool and interesting science opportunity for students to grow and be creative. And then at the Sudlersville Middle School, they celebrated Veterans Day as well. And they um, had um, indoor and outdoor ac activities that they did. Um, you can also see here that the band played, the chorus was, was involved, and um, some of the local veterans came out. So that was a good opportunity to engage with students. At the high school level, you can see um, actually both of our representatives will probably go into a little bit of the detail here, but they had some school visits. Um, they also did a, full, a food drive. And at Queen Anne's, um, the students were enjoying the winter tent for lunch. And I have to say that that's probably been one of the most positive additions that we put at the high schools. We've heard lots of really good feedback that the students just enjoy being outside, obviously um, being able to eat lunch and enjoy the weather. And again, they also had started their college tours. You know, the colleges come to them. And just a little bit about our department's uh, food service. You can see uh, it's an amazing number, 42,885 breakfasts and 67,885 lunches. Um, it just blows my mind that, that we're able to do that volume. And you can see there some of the colorful displays um, that food service is able to do with our students. So nice and healthy. Veggie hummus, who couldn't get healthier than that, right? <laughs> So that kind of concludes the spotlight of a little bit that took place in November across the district. And, and I think we've talked about it before. This um, lunches, 40, I'm sorry, breakfast is 42,000, which is mm -hmm. great. But we used to do free and reduced for, and, and that's going to really affect our budget in the coming years, I think. Yes. I know you're going to talk about that at other budget times, but you know now with everybody receiving free, free lunches, which is great. Everybody mm -hmm. gets free lunches. It's hurting our other federally funded grants yes. because that's going to put a, I think, and I think you've mentioned it's, it's across the state and the country, but it is it, it's a concern that we're going to have to face. Yeah, so they're all formula-based um, equations that they use, and one of the factors of that formula is your free and reduced population, and that's how many students actually apply for and receive that benefit. And since the, um, you know, the federal government 
government decided that with COVID going on that they would make everything free to all um, for school districts this year, which is amazing and wonderful and our students are taking advantage of that, um, not as many people chose to apply because they didn't feel that it was necessary to apply. But unfortunately that um, you know was based on our, our, our funding and so therefore with less that applied, that's negatively impacted our budget overall. Well, do they, go, do they make this rect act to use our old numbers? I mean, or how's it, I mean, because, you know, like our enrollment is based on September the 30th, but if we don't recoup these numbers and all of a sudden the government stops this program and we haven't signed up enough for, I mean, it, 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 right. to me, we need to do some forward thinking and advocate that even to the state and federal government, if we were at this number two years ago, pre-COVID, we need to be at that, give us a grace period of a six months to get things signed up or something. I mean, yeah. somehow we got So there's two different numbers we're talking about. One is your September 30th right. enrollment count, and then this is actually an October 30th um, date for your free and reduce. So these are two different numbers, but both numbers are used in the formulas to how we get funded. Mm -hmm. And we are absolutely down in enrollment. Um, this past year, we were able to use a three-year rolling average mm -hmm which made it kind of so that it held us harmless and, and didn't necessarily negatively impact our budget. But in moving forward, that has not been um, the case. And we are definitely advocating for the state to evaluate these two um, formulas and hold us um, you know, harmless um, for at least one more year to see if we can get enrollments back up in both of the categories. Right. We did do an outreach. Um, Mr. Pender and his staff um, did everything from phone calls to personal calls to to flyers, to emails, to try to encourage parents to um, get online and, and, and or do a, a application paper pencil. Um, and we just still didn't have the numbers that um, we had the previous year. So um, we're working on it I, as, the, as a group of superintendents and as the group of CFOs, Mrs. Towers is a part of, we are both advocating in those groups to make sure that we hold numbers harmless for at least one more year. But we don't know, so stay tuned kind of, you know. I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, it's when you talk, you're talking millions of dollars. We're talking millions of dollars. You know, and when we, you know. So every but, student for enrollment purposes is about sixteen thousand dollars, and so if you have a drop in enrollment of three hundred and fifty students times sixteen thousand, you can see how quickly that impacts your budget. Gotcha. Thank you. Sure. A student board member Jackson. Yeah. Uh, so at Kent Island, it's been a really exciting time. We just concluded our fall sports season. Um, our season unfortunately ended with a loss against Frederick Douglass, but I think we ended the season 10 and one. That was our only loss. We had a great football season. Uh, as we said before, there's a dance concert tonight at the high school. There's also gonna be a band and choir concert on the 15th of December. Uh, there's rehearsals underway for The Little Mermaid. I think it was just recently cast. Um, our winter sports are now underway and the COVID testing system that we have for that is going really well. Uh, as mentioned before, we had the canned food drive where we got about 4,600 cans. We also had a blood drive through Blood Bank of Delmarva and I think we had like our highest participation ever. So that was definitely a large success. Uh, the marching band is going to be the, in the parade in Centerville this Friday. Mr. Barnum is the new assistant principal at the Annex and he's settled in and everyone likes him. And um, in addition to the colleges that have been consistently visiting, we are gonna have a trade fair. Oh, nice. Good. Yep, that's all I've got. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you. Um, we have a few things going on in Queen Anne's County. Um, tonight at 7, we have the band and choir students perform at the, for the Winslow concert. Um, then our dancers will perform for our annual Winslow dance concert at the summer 15th at 7 p.m. Um, both of these will be held in the auditorium. Spring musical auditions have begun, and the musical will be James and the Giant Peach. Oh, yay. This Friday, December, at December 3rd, um, we will have the Student of the Month ceremony. And also this Friday is the popular Christmas parade. This year's theme is a gingerbread, gingerbread house Christmas. Interim reports to parents will be emailed at, on December 10th. And students who participated in the PSAT on October 26th should be receiving their scores um, the week of December 6th. Um, they can access that through their college board accounts. Um, winter sports practice has begun and starting December 6th, starting December 6th, our first week of competition. And lastly, we have begun, we have our holiday break um, coming from December 23rd to January 2nd. And for our winter sports, we had our first, I mean, our second basketball scrimmage yesterday. We won, and then we have our wrestling scrimmage tonight at Pushrat starting at 7, down in near Snow Hill, I think. Thank you.
Very nice. I know you have something going on Queen Anne, or Ken Island, you have something going on Queen Anne, so if you all stay as late as you feel, or if you decide to get out and want to go back to your direct to schools or do something, feel free to do that. Okay, thank okay. you. <laughs> Hey, our next is uh, citizen comments. Um. Oh, sure. Okay, we ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster including their name, number, and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for comment, public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you do have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and your right to convey your message freely, but asks as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Um, looks like we had somebody move up. Uh, Karen Fields. State your name and address for the record. My name is Karen Fields. I am the president of the Queen Anne County Education Association, and I'm a teacher at Centerville Middle School. Uh, the picture you saw of the faculty student um, kickball game, the students won. I just had to say <laughs> that. And I personally always root for the students. So on behalf of the association, I wish everyone a safe and healthy new year. As we approach 2022, we all wish that COVID was in the rear view mirror, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, it is not. We have all been dealing with a rolling 18-month crisis with repercussions for our students, our staff, and our community. I thank Dr. Salins for listening to our suggestion for the option of virtual PD. Having that choice will make a difference in the morale of all staff. I also thank her for presenting a revised schedule that built in additional half days for all staff and students at the last board meeting. The parent survey results show the majority of parents that completed the survey support those additional half days. Parents know that their children need these days as well. It is my understanding that the survey sent to staff crashed because the system was overwhelmed with responses. This speaks volumes in itself. Retention and recruitment of all staff is a great concern. QACEA will continue to work with our members, administrators, Dr. Salins, and the board to create a sustainable workload and a working environment where hard work and dedication is appreciated, respected, and rewarded. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie. I am Stephanie Anthony. Um, I live in Centerville. Um, I'm a teacher at Kennard Elementary School, the mom of two school-aged kids in the county, and also secretary of the Teachers Union. I am hoping that the results of the survey um, I'm hoping with the results of the survey that the vote to amend the calendar will be a no-brainer. Regardless, I still feel compelled to speak tonight after seeing how much reluctance there was um, from this board at the last meeting to approve it. When we need medical advice, we seek advice from the medical professionals, pediatricians, primary cares. We need legal advice, we seek legal advice from a lawyer. So why is it that when we need information about what the students of this county need or what the teachers need, our first response is to go to the stakeholders? This is where I struggle when it comes to some of the voting that occurs with this board. Maybe it's because you do not understand what, we, what is done each and every day in the life of a teacher. So collectively with my colleagues, I made a list. We communicate with parents about behavior concerns, complete checklists for pediatricians, grade papers, input data for supervisors and specialists, return phone calls, return emails, collaborate with teammates, modify lesson plans to fit the needs of each individual student, gather resources, purchase resources, make copies, prepare items for students in quarantine, watch PD videos, meet with administrators and supervisors to dis discuss feedback, troubleshoot Chromebook issues, that's my personal favorite, stay connected with SPED teachers um, to analyze student progress 
progress and stay connected with guidance counselors on social emotional needs. This is only 15 out of the over 40 that um, made the list collectively by teachers at all levels because three minutes isn't enough to share what we do. But I still wanted to clarify one thing that I think gets lost in translation, that all of those items in our to-do list have to be completed during one hour a day during my prep time because, well, the rest of the hours I'm teaching. I do not get the entire work day to accomplish my duties. I get one hour a day. So for those of you that are more of a mathematical brain, let me put this into perspective with a number. We average 24 students per class at KES. This means with my 60 minutes of prep time, I get roughly two and a half minutes per child a day. Just two and a half minutes. See, teaching is an art, but it does not come without preparation and reflection if you want to do it well. So please give us grace when we say that these half days are needed, needed by staff and by your students because they deserve more than two and a half minutes a day. Teachers are not perfect. We are not machines. We need compassion just like our students do, and that's okay. And it's also okay for the selected board to reach out to us, conversate with us, and see how we feel about what is needed because we are very much the professionals in the field of education. And we are kind people who would love to chat with you about what goes on in our classrooms. By the way, this allotted three minutes to speak is more than the amount of time I get to pre prepare adequate and meaningful instruction for each child that walks through my door each and every day. With that data alone, is there any question of whether those half days are appropriate? I would love to conversate with any of you longer about any of the things that are done on a daily basis or how things are going in the classroom. You can always reach out. I'm sure that a lot of my other colleagues feel the same way. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Wait a second. That That's weapon? right. <laughs> Danny. I'm glad the police is here. <laughs> There's a reason we have them here today. I might need it. <laughs> Janet Falls, 106 Willis Road, Centerville, Maryland. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. It is my pleasure tonight to come here and welcome Ms. Shannon Bett. I did not have the opportunity to attend the swearing in because I was busy on a committee with Mr. Mon in the back and um, working on the, re the, the what we were going to do with this new building. But I've had the opportunity to know Ms. Bett for several years and work with her, and I know that she is a very uh, great candidate for the board. I just want to know that we support you you and we're here for you and we welcome you and to each and every one have a great holiday thank you, thank you. we know she'd like to work with you single mitchell <laughs> Good evening, my name is Cecilia Mitchell. I'm a teacher at Graysonville Elementary School and I also serve on the executive board of our um, professional association. Um, I'm, my colleagues spoke so beautifully and completely. This is a very kind of emotional statement for me because this is my reaction to some of the comments that were made at the previous board meeting. Um, I rolled a lot of things around in my head, but I kept coming back to this theme of time. Um, Dr. Salins had proposed adjustments to our professional development days by providing a virtual option, and I just want to say personally thank you. I greatly appreciate that. It has had a very positive impact on me. However, there were some comments made about teachers working beyond their duty day to complete progress reports. Like that was okay, and I don't think it's okay to expect that from us. Um, I think it's wrong to assume or, or expect that we would put our own lives and families on a back burner. My students are important, but I have personal responsibilities as well. Sometimes I wonder if that is kind of our fault because we're kind of caring, giving people. Um, that's kind of a trademark of teachers, but I think that as the world has changed that we need to evolve with it. And if one thing that I've learned from COVID is that those boundaries and those lines are really important. Um, if the task is important, then time should be given for that task to be completed. 
Um, Dr. Salen suggested amending the calendar with additional half days. It was prefaced with a very clear concern for the well-being of professionals and students. Um, some of the reactions to that proposal I found um, incredibly disheartening. Um, things like, I'm not a fan of half days, it'll be hard on parents because they will have to find daycare. When commenting on the survey, something to the effect, it's probably not gonna change my mind, but I'm willing to listen to anybody but. How could I be made to feel less respected? Um, the comment that we're not the only ones suffering from the pandemic is true, but the board is the body that has oversight of me and my coworkers. Um, if you don't already know, if you cannot imagine how traumatized and exhausted we are, then you're not listening. And to Stephanie's point, talk to us. We are open for that conversation. I think that's what leadership is, is that exchange. Um, you have a responsibility, I think, to understand all of us from 12-month employees to 10-month employees, nurses, part-time employees, custodians, teachers, the list goes on and on of people for whom you have oversight and hopefully will extend that care. Um, we need help, we need relief. Our students need help, our students need relief. And thankfully, based on the results of the surveys, the families in this community recognize that. We appreciate their support of the addition of the half days to this calendar. We hope that you will include them because something has to give us back some time so that we can continue to do what we love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, did I have this right? Okay. I don't know, I think it's Mark. Oh, it's, no. He's our next presentation. Dang. Neil. He, oh, he, he didn't can know. speak if you want. He, he's gonna speak, but he's- Keep you for he's, three minutes. Happy yeah. holidays, guys. Do I have anybody else? Uh, happy um, holidays. That would like to speak? Hearing none, okay, thank you. Hey, Dr. Salins, the COVID metrics? Yes. Dr. Kipler is bringing that chart up, but um, I'm sure the board has had an opportunity to review that. This is just, again, the ongoing um, opportunity. I know you get this daily. Sometimes it's really good to look at something, um, you know, all put together in, in one slide so that you can see the progression here. Um, we, were, we were doing pretty, pretty good um, prior to this, and now it seems that we're kind of creeping back up. Um, and so that's a little disheartening, um, but we're doing what we do best in schools, and um, we're continuing to use good mitigation strategies. Uh, when things were looking uh, brighter, we started to bring in volunteers to our school. That has been successful. It has not increased any type of spread within the schools. So we've been pleased with that. Um, we're continuing to try to layer in some of that normal back to students. And we are honestly not seeing that those layers are, are you know, uh, resulting in any type of additional spread within the building. I'll give you another example, school lockers. Um, these secondary folks have been working um, with their staff to get students back in some sort of rotation because we're, we're getting into a colder season. Students are wearing coats. That's very difficult to you know, have your backpack and your winter coat with you and such. So um, we've been moving into having students um, on a rotating basis and creating different plans of action to be able to have students safely use their lockers. Um, and again, we haven't noticed that that has increased any type of spread within the buildings um, because we're using, continuing to use those good mitigation strategies. So. Um, the numbers kind of speak for themselves, but it's just always good to kind of at least have a touch point to just visually see what that progression is um, over the course of the last, you know, 10 to 15 days. Um, um, like I like to ask, do we have any students currently hospitalized or have we? Um, actually, we did have um, a student who was in intensive care, um, but is now been released, um, was not here locally, obviously, um, we're over the bridge and um, has some pretty significant long-term um, recovery, I think, ahead. Um, but uh, to my knowledge, that's the only student at this point and they have been released from the hospital. Um, I have one, one question, um, watching the um, Maryland State Department of Education meeting today, and one of the members, Mr. Shark, is it? Sh what was his name? Mr. Bartley. Mm -hmm. He was saying something about um, 
using student data as opposed to just county data um, to, but is that even possible to get, to, to get student information about new cases and stuff as opposed to just countywide? Uh, the health department does get that breakdown, I believe, through Dr. Ciotola, um, I believe because he can tell me school age-wise. So I think okay. they use the indicator from 18 and under as a school age. Um, and so I think he could probably provide that information. If that's something the board would like me to pursue, I'd be happy to do that. I don't know if anybody else does, but I, it would, I think it would be nice to see those. Um, if it's easy to provide without providing, okay. I don't want to do any extra work for anybody. But if he puts them together, um, I would like to see. That. I certainly will but, ask him. Um, Carol help. Remind me to follow to up with it. Dr. Ciotola. Thanks. Sure, absolutely. I don't want to put a tempest in a teapot, but the Baltimore Sun just put out the Board of Education, the State Board of Education calls for off ramp option to lifting school masking. Or what? I haven't been notified of anything. Nothing. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, the off ramp was a, that's an interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's what they just put out. Her, but you know, I, I heard it throughout the whole meeting today is, is keeping that emergency regulation along with having some off ramps available um, if you hit certain numbers. But that was a part of what Mr. Bartley was saying <coughs> is, is it, should it be county wide or should it be student wide? You know, right. you're, you're School. I, so it was interesting. I meeting. think um, I think the philosophy is though that um, that the students they don't want to spread it obviously in the schools because they could take it home to someone at home who would be of elderly age or or someone who could be compromised and end up. I think that was the original philosophy. Now whether that has changed or not is again I'm not a healthcare provider, but I think that was the original philosophy. Um, but as I said, in schools, you know, we I, I feel that we've done a, a great job of continuing so many practices that and and in sports we. Have haven't had, um, you know, we had briefly, we had uh, two teams we shut down for a brief period of time um, early on in the process of the school year. And um, very thankful that at this time we have not had um, a team be a source of like a spread. Right. So I think that again, people are extremely respectful. I think the coaches and teachers have been amazing staff, all staff members really. Um, for everybody from cleaning the high touch areas uh, frequently through the day to making sure that students are, you know, as, as well as can be socially distanced in a cafeteria and such. I think everybody's kind of really pulled in a team effort to make that happen. How's the quarantine going? Is that getting less for students or? Mm -hmm. It is, it is. Um, and a little bit of that is because um, we haven't had as many positives, but also because we changed the quarantining as of November 1. And so that helped um, as well. Um, we still are though having to quarantine and most of those are coming from um, your uh, lunch areas where students have to obviously not have a mask on in order to eat. And a lot of times in our schools, we are not able to 100% six foot or more to socially distance. Um, just because indoors we're not, um, don't have the capacity to do that. Um, but certainly, as I said, at the high school level, there's, and, and middle school level where we've had the tents, I mean, they've really enjoyed that. I mean, I almost see like there's some things some, from COVID that I think will just be a permanent thing. And I think that it has been just an added um, positive addition to those schools. And I think that we would, you know, continue that even after we don't need to quote unquote socially distance like we are right now. I was out running today um, and ran by Ken Island and Bayside and it was, it was right during recess and it was just such a joy to see, mm -hmm. to see them all just running around and playing and it was, and it was a beautiful day. We've been very lucky and blessed with some good weather so that we can keep students out as long as possible. I've been out to the schools. I've seen teachers taking classes outside and just doing a break with kids and it is just um, refreshing and delightful to see students be able to be kids. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, 802, safety update. Lieutenant. Good evening. How you doing? Good evening. evening, sir. Lieutenant Mark Mill from the Sheriff's Department. I have a few brief remarks, so I'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Salines, board members, on behalf of Sheriff Hoffman and the entire staff in the Queens County Sheriff's Department, thank you for including our agency in this meeting today. It is a privilege being here to provide updates for the Sheriff's Office Resource Unit. Uh, Dr. Salins, I wish to convey to you a personal message from Sheriff Hoffman um, and our staff regarding how much we appreciate the support, the partnership, cooperation, and communication that our two agencies share daily. Your administration has proven to be very transparent in this relationship, and we thank you very much. Thank you. 
I would first like to provide an update on the school bus enforcement program that we started uh, this past year. Uh, it's running smoothly and efficiently at this point. Uh, in the beginning, we had a few hiccups, but it's going really well. Over the past 30 days, our office reviewed 154 citations. <sighs> We are averaging approximately 15 to 20 citations per day um, for review. Uh, from the beginning of the school year up to today, there have been 378 citations reviewed. And these are violations that come through the system for us to look at. And when you say that, that's somebody running a red lights on a school bus. Correct. Correct. We are seeing at times some concerns. Uh, when we review the videos, we do see uh, some issues where personnel who are driving vehicles near the buses are driving at high rates of speed. We have seen some instances where they drive um, at high rates of speeds nonstop near bus stops. Uh, we ask that citizens please slow down, pay attention, and stop when appropriate to allow our students to safely enter and exit off the buses. Another issue of note, not directly related to the school bus enforcement program, but it's something that we've seen an increase in recently, is the transports of students by parents to and from school uh, due to various reasons. Our office has taken steps to work with Mr. Sid Pender uh, on this issue to alleviate the traffic congestion concerns at various schools. We have discussed options in various ways to mitigate these issues, such as the traffic flagger program, deploying our auxiliary volunteer deputies to assist when available, and providing additional deputies to perform traffic control to alleviate congestion as best as possible. One of our primary goals, obviously, is to ensure students get into and out of school facilities as safely and efficiently as possible. Our office continues to provide the best possible service we can daily to ensure the safety and welfare of all county citizens, as well as students, faculty, staff within the Board of Education properties. In closing, I wish to again thank Dr. Salings and the board today uh, for your continued support and cooperation with our staff. We appreciate you all and the excellent work relationships that we have together. I have open for questions if you have any. That, that number amazes me. Is that uh, a statewide thing? Are we? I mean, do we have numbers? Or that just that's uh, pretty amazing. The, these are countywide uh, numbers, and it's just uh, from the beginning of the school year. So it, it's it is pretty alarming, and I, I hope with our public messaging getting out to the community that, that they really pay attention and realize that they're putting lives at risk. And these people are getting, getting citations and goes on their driver's or their car like you would a speed camera. Yes, when a violation occurs, it goes on the driver, owner, owner, owner of the vehicle's driver record, and they have, they're responsible for the payment, the owner of the vehicle is. Okay. There's no points assessed, but there was a heavy fine. Is there any, I mean, if, if we find repeat places, is there times we can, you know, if we see it happening at one place all the time, can we get a deputy or somebody there to actually get the right person? If that's, you know, I mean. It's a great question. We, we do work closely with the vendor who operates the system, and they do provide those reports to us, and we can aggressively enforce certain locations within the county that we've seen increase in violations. So we, we're in constant communication with them daily. Place and time. I'm sorry? Place and time. I mean, there's got to be, there yes. could be. Yes. Locations specific. and date and times. If we see a rise in, say, a North County location, we can pinpoint that spot and, and time frame and get up there and aggressively enforce it as well. And the other thing, I think, you know, we, we've heard this thing of Michigan. We've been very fortunate across the United States recently. But people need to communicate. And they need to get, you know, if, if parents or students have an issue, or, I mean, there are eyes and ears. You guys do a great job, but they need to tell the principal or the whoever is in charge, mm -hmm. the teacher, to make sure that because you know, they can get in touch with you guys immediately, get a hold of Sid and have you have there. And that's we just we need to be diligent, you know, very diligent to find out to make sure that you know we're aware, so you know we know what's going on around our surroundings to to portray it to you, so we have a safe community. And absolutely, and actually, our public information officer has has received tips from community members who see violations, I 
gets thrown aware that it's being caught on the video, but they still contact our office okay. as well. And we, we follow up with that with the vendor and also with eyes on location with the violations. I, I, I as this one board member, can certainly thank you all for what you do, your uh, deputies that are in there, our school system, and uh, a working relationship in our, I call it a small community, uh, 50,000 people, but uh, <laughs> compared to some, mm -hmm. uh, you guys, yeah, it's a great partnership and we, we appreciate what you do and I know the public does too. We thank you all very much as well. And the, and the public's been great as well, so we appreciate them. Do you members? No. Yep, no. We appreciate it. Thank thank you have you a, have a nice Christmas. Yeah, holidays. Thank you, you so too. much. Have a good evening. Okay, our next is 803. Advanced Placement Program Policy 602. So, um, President Smith, just uh, I know that we had um, some questions about the policy committee, mm -hmm. and and so I'd like to speak to that if that's okay with you. Um, so apparently, in in the past, we've had a policy committee, and um, we've lacked the Citizens Advisory Council, which really is a coma regulation. And so my recommendation to the board was to really um, kind of put that policy committee on pause so that we can get back and realign ourselves to the Comar regulation, which is to create that CAC. And then in addition to that, create a school system improvement council, which would be representative from every school, a certified staff member from every school, as well as the union, as well as a representative from the administrators and supervisors association. Um, so those two groups would essentially absorb that opportunity to review um, your policy. So you get a much broader perspective of eyes on it and I think those uh, a better recommendation and um, kind of informational items that could come to the board um, when you have a larger group taking an opportunity to walk through the policy um, so I, I, you know, this policy obviously did not go, these these recommendations for changes did not go through a quote unquote policy committee. Um, as we're trying to get that up and running for the springtime, this went through the executive team. So it did get eyes on it. Um, these are recommendations and I clearly want the board to understand that, um, you know, there's multiple readings for board members and that's because it gives the board an opportunity to ask questions, to get answers to those questions, to make recommendations for changes to staff and we appreciate that process and we, we don't, I don't want you to think that we don't appreciate that, we don't want that feedback, um, but I ask that since this is kind of my first year and we're trying to kind of realign some things that maybe needed to be realigned that we have through the spring to get those committees up and running and that from that point forward, they would serve as a very good resource and sounding board for board members um, as it relates to policy changes. And so while it's a little bit jumbled right now, I ask for your patience and certainly if you have questions or concerns about this tonight, we can um, take that feedback and come back to the table. I don't want you to feel pressured that you you know have to approve this this evening, um, but I, I do think it's clean. And so I'll stop there and let <laughs> let you go ahead and describe the changes here for and articulate them for the board. So unless the board has questions, one thing on that: Do they keep minutes of these meetings? Yes. Would it be available for the board to get copies of those minutes? So Absolutely. We, so then the, every board member would see what's up in, in, the, in the system running down the pike. Uh, even though I, I completely agree, we have three readings of it. There's plenty of time to digest it, look at it, but I'd also like to have the minutes so we can see if something's on the ground, how it's, how it's going or something. And, as board would then get you know, to you and if they have any questions on Absolutely. that. Um, Absolutely. Matter of fact, how, how that works is that the, the um, board members actually make recommendations for the CAC mm -hmm. of people in the community that they feel would be a, a good person to um, you know, be able to look at and review policy. Um, principals make recommendations for the CAC that would be included in the, um, such as a, a PTA person. So you get kind of this diverse group there. Certainly a board member can choose to sit on that if they would like to. For the SSI see um, those, as I said, would be recommendations through the school. All of those would have a, a roster where people would sign in so you would know who was in attendance for the meeting and then there would be a series of minutes that would be um, actually logged in and, and kept in an archive. So all that information would be available to the board at any time. Does the board also have on that issue have any questions? Mm -hmm. no. okay. Thank you. So I do. Okay. <laughs> Um, I see, thank you very much for sticking to the format that was designed over four years ago. Thank you for that. 
Is this in keeping with the state line? Is this lining up to the state policy for the AP? Right. So I see the date back of 2009. I'm sure so many things have happened. Hmm. Well, so I will do all the formalities first so that we're on. Hello, Ms. Passon. Okay, yes, hello. <laughs> Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, members of the board and the executive team. For the record, my name is Bridget Passon. Uh, my primary role with the county is as the English language arts supervisor for grades three through 12, but I am here tonight as a policy writer so Ms. Harper, you bring up a good point. And if for some of you, this policy seems a little bit like deja vu, it is. Because we st I started work on it about this time last year, and I brought it to you as a new policy, and then learned after the first read that it was actually a revision from 2009. Um, but so many other things were happening that we were working through and with, with virtual learning and COVID that this kind of got delayed. Um, and as Dr. Salins just explained, we are working to recalibrate uh, the, how policies make their way to you. Uh, but we found this one or so we hope to be nice and clean and we'd really like to get it, um, get it on the record. So this is the advanced placement prog programs uh, policy, policy 602. The revisions include language that are more inclusive for all students, not just college bound students, as the 2009 version of it indicate. And you can see the different things that we crossed out, kind of take out that, that antiquated language and open it to students no, no matter whether they're college or career bound. Um, the benefits of an AP program, of an AP course. Um, and our goal to, to have every student take one based on strength, um, academic strength or their, their own interest. Um, so we hope that these revisions um, Ms. Harper, as you pointed out, yes, we're still in keeping that cross out and then write the new information in red. Um, and some of this language, I think, Ms. Bennett, I think you've caught something in, in policy element 1A that we had some language to work on and we fixed that. So that's here so that it, it is more inclusive. I think that's what we had to change when we were working on it last fall. Um, so if you have any revisions or things you want us to think about or consider or additional language, um, I'm happy to take those th those questions or edits or revisions now. So <clears throat> there's only so many AP teachers, right? And so many slots for AP yes. classes. Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna encourage all students to take them just for interest or whatever, do we expect that there's gonna be room for all the college bound students that do you want to participate in these AP classes? We, we do, and we've actually been looking at scheduling, um, and some of the courses have been, um, honestly, um, traditionally, I'm not quite sure how it got this way, but like a year-long course where they were actually being awarded two AP credits, which is against the Comar regs. And so we've had, we really have to look at that and cohort that out. Um, and and so knowing that, then that that's gonna open up multiple opportunities to add AP courses um, when you're not looking at a year-long experience. Now, there are some courses that we will do year-long where they'll get an elective credit and an AP credit um, paired together, but those are far and few between, and they're based on the extensive um, content load within the course, and most of those would fall into your science categories. Right. Right. Ms. Passons, I started that question looking at you, and I <laughs> ended up looking at her, yeah, so <laughs> if you have anything to add, please. No, please I, I agree with what Dr. Salen said, and, and we're seeing enrollment that we, we need to boost to bolster the enrollment in our AP courses. We're competing with lots okay. of great programs. And so, you know, this language gives us gives us a platform to do heavier recruiting, uh, things that the different supervisors are doing in their middle, and uh, there are other courses in high school to get students ready for the rigor and pace of an, of an AP class are also so important as well. So as long as we are able to have a say in it, there will be room for everyone uh, in our AP courses. And, there, and there's plenty of room to invite to invite students who haven't typically tried out an AP course. Sure. Okay. And, and, and you'll see that the AP courses now are really um, winding and blending nicely into some mm -hmm. of our CTE courses, yes. which traditionally people don't think of. They think of a CTE course as something that wouldn't be an advanced placement, but many of those courses, um, bio, and, bio and engineering, mm -hmm. um, computer science, they all have a level of AP courses in them. So we've actually really been able to expand that out more so. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to encourage more students to participate because yes. some of our AP courses, they don't have a, a big caseload for the teachers. Right. So they might, you know, we try to keep the threshold at 10, to be honest with you. Sometimes it dips slightly below and some of 
your very advanced classes, um, but there's an opportunity to grow there, right? So if right. you have so 10, you, you can grow to 12, 15. Significant yes. increase, right? Yes. You can increase staff and, you know, as appropriate and yeah. and uh, <laughs> capable. So. Yeah, so, I mean, we're very excited about the opportunities that I think the sure. APO brings okay. to us. Excellent. I had a question on... Um, where it seemed like some of the stuff that was taken out was was the measurables, um, you know. So we talked about the weighted. So the weighted grade is coming out, and it just says advanced placement will be weighted to reflect the academic rigor of these courses. What does that mean exactly? So I think the last time I was here, I was here with policy and regulations. Mm -hmm. So all of that explanation is in the regulations that okay. accompany that. But the weighted grade means that. Uh, uh, Advanced placement will be rated to reflect the academic rigor uh, of the course. When you go into the regs, it explains how um, it has to do with quality points. So an A in an AP class will get five quality points, whereas an A in a regular course would get four. And, it, and it's slowly, and it, um, it works backwards. So oh, B, I'm gonna open up a whole nother can of worms and go, as a parent of a past student, when are we gonna start allowing general ed have one level of points, you know, then you have AP and then in the middle you have Iowa. Yeah. So when are we going to allow yeah. them to be weighted differently? Well, we, we've just begun those discussions, to be honest with you. Okay. I mean, I think there's a lot of different philosophies and right. thought patterns behind mm -hmm. that. I mean, certainly, I mean, one of the arguments is you have a student who's taking a dual enrollment course, which is a college course, and then you have a student taking AP. The AP's weighted, but the dual enrollment's not. Right. Um, right. So those are some things that, I mean, we have to have discussions. Honors. That's and then be, you have honors classes, yeah. which aren't weighted. Right. Not weighted yeah. at all. So, not weighted well, an differently. honors class, to me, is more of a prep class. To, to prepare and, and kind of gather some skill sets to go into an AP class. That's my that's kind of the way I look at it. Um, so I don't know about those necessarily, but if you have a college course, when at what point do you look at a college, a kid's getting, a student is getting college credit for this course. It, as an AP student, they're getting college credit for this course, and how is that equal? And it, it is quite a discussion that I think the um, high school committee will have. Okay. Um, I think that it's going to take us several meetings to get through, yes. kind of pulling all those philosophies together to determine what's in the best interest of kids overall. I've only been bringing this up for how, you know, <laughs> probably 10, 12 years because, he, as you know, Montgomery County, Howard County, they weigh everything differently. So, you know, you can't, there's no apple, it's apples to oranges. And I think that we have to recognize too that our students are different. Some thrive in an AP environment, some thrive in a dual enrollment, and they're very different environments. Yes. And so, you know, we have to recognize the differences of our students, and then we have to really think about how do we make sure that we're equitable and fair across the board. So um, again, there's lots of philosophies out there. Lots of districts do it different ways. And we need to pull all that data together and really kind of look at it and see what everybody else does and then kind of determine what's best for us, right. what's best for our kids. It's, it's going to be a hard process. <laughs> well, at least at least the, the can's already open, open Miss Harper. It's, it's open. The can was already open. Yes. So uh, we, we know. We know it's. <laughs> you've tired of hearing me say it. it. <laughs> no, no, we know. We know. Okay. No, but it's a good point, though. Yes, I have to admit, it's a, it's a very, very, very good um, a point that needs to be worked through. And then I have one other question. Which okay. Is just on F, is the board recognizes it that we should provide appropriate staff development for teachers of AP courses. What does that look like when you guys were writing that? What did that look like to you? So the college board offers AP summer institutes. Uh, so it's important that we not only capitalize on those, but that we have funding to pay for them and then that we're monitoring the learning that they do in the AP institutes. So for instance, you know, with good professional development, if we're paying for them to take a week long course in how to teach AP English literature and composition, you know, that we're going in to visit the class and asking them what they're applying and, and what are they take from that institute um, so that we know that there was application from the learning that they did. Thank you. They actually have to get a certification just for your knowledge like they have to be AP certified in order to teach the course that's mm -hmm. college and your board. syllabus as well you have yes. to your so syllabus has to be it's ready. actually very structured mm -hmm. um, very strict and, and very good I mean I think it's it's you know the the um, professional development in the summer is very challenging yes. and I think our staff members do very well with that but making sure we have the funding to, to yes because they do updates they have to do so many updates and everything so it's very I think it's a very good and, and solid programming yes piece of things thanks I know after the first reading, we put it on our public website for public comment. Right, we do that tomorrow. It'll go out for public comment. And then we can see what comments we get and look at mm -hmm. it and stuff like that. And then I'll come back to you in a month mm -hmm. and we'll see whatever comments there were. This page here. I, I, 
I see it every time. That's a nice page. <laughs> I think that's part of what we're working on. Yeah. Okay, you're working on <laughs> doing this. Yeah. Okay. We're trying to Thank you. streamline this process into something that's very valuable. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other questions by the board? No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank right, you so much. Bye. Happy holidays. Yeah. Take care. Happy holidays. We're going to Jane Towers. Huh? That's okay. I was just going to say we're going to 8.05. Yeah. President Smith, Dr. Sam, board members. Tonight we bring before you for information the expenditure status reports, both the summary and detail for your review for period five in November. Any questions? Oh, Mike. You know, right now, energy's going up. It's falling down this week, but no telling what's going to happen. Um, and we're turning our, and it sits back, we're oh, turning good. our air over more in our schools. Do we anticipate any adverse effect to this budget because of that? With the, um, well, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, fuel car, I guess we're locked into a lot of fuel cost. We're locked into the fuel cost, but I will tell you that since school has started running the extra hours before and after to um, basically cleanse the air, uh, you're seeing anywhere from 26,000 extra kilowatt hours. I've seen up to 50,000 um, based upon the temperature of the outside and also- 50,000 a month? 50,000 kilowatts, yes. I mean, um, you think about it, our average electric bill for an elementary school is about uh, anywhere between five, eight thousand dollars. Middle school is about ten to fifteen thousand dollars, and then a high school can go anywhere from eighteen to twenty-four thousand dollars. So, you add those two hour extra hours on, you know, um, you're adding a lot of time. I, I used to have it broken down to fifteen-minute increments, but I, oh. I, I can't remember what it is. But I yes, mean, you, we'll you see some more, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah, and 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 the colder it gets, the worse it's going to get. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, I mean, is, is, are we going to have a problem in February or March, or you don't know yet? I won't, I, we won't know based upon, I mean, you know, if you have a polar vortex or something like that, yeah. But, but I mean, just, just being two hours over to me sounds like oh, yeah. ba Basically, I'm thinking back now, basically for every 15 minutes for an entire year that we run all the schools, it equals up to about $25,000. Mm -hmm. So you're talking two hundred extra thousand, $200,000 extra on top of that, at least. At least. That's if we stay on a normal year. Yep. Because basically of all the conservation measures, we've thrown out the window, literally. So were we able to use any funds, any grant monies for enter, for it, this since? This might be an opportunity to look at our COVID funds for that because it, it does ad address a pandemic. Okay. Direct. And then I know that the commissioners, I think, went, um, they enrolled in that next AMP. It's a solar farm mm -hmm. uh, thing. Is that something that they did just for, for the county or is that, are we included? Actually, in part of I that? just received an email the other day from, from that company. I haven't spoken to them, but we do have um, a solar field at Queen Anne's County High School that feeds Centerville Middle School, Queen Anne's County High School, and then also uh, we're able to net meter with Kent Island High School. Um, Graysonville Elementary School has solar. Um, there's a small rooftop unit on Kent Island and a small one on top of Sellersville Middle School. But Yeah, I don't think that this was the solar on our property. Uh, this, this is where you can purchase it. Yes, yes through yeah. Net metering. And it supposedly saves the 10%. Right. So uh, we are fortunate to be in Esmic Energy Trust. I don't okay. know if you want to go into detail, more detail about that, or um, we've been in that for several years. Correct? It's basically the Esmic Energy Trust. You're purchasing. Um, blocks of energy yeah. um, at, at certain prices trying to get the best deal based upon the quantity purchased among the Eastern Shore um, Board of Educations and also Chesapeake College and a few towns and counties involved in that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it affects it. I think okay. it's a, on top in addition, of. Okay. It's, yeah. But I'm glad that they sent something because I do think it's on top of all of your um, co-ops, your cooperatives and stuff. So we'll research it for sure. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Any board members, any other questions? Thank you, Jane. All right, she's staying up there. No, she's up there next time. I will. Uh, one more thing to bring. Up, oh, okay. Esner, <laughs> two breakdown. Gotcha. Yes. 
Uh, this is the breakdown of ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 expenditures for your review. And if you can remember, ESSER 2 is uh, tied to your PPE, social distancing. ESSER 3 is really targeting that learning loss. And that will run our summer school next year and things of Correct. that nature. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know, I hear nothing but praise about how Queen Anne's County, which then would be you, taking the lead on um, just how we report this stuff, how we are accountable. Um, very impressive um, that you keep us on point. Thank you. We have a great grant specialist, too, that's amazing. Do board members have any other questions? No. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, you've had time. We have time to review our human resource and substitute bus drivers report. Mr. Smith, point of order, are we going to take a break or are we going to mm. keep uh, I say move on, but you... I wait. say take a break. I need to get this mask off. We'll take a break. Right. Thank you. I'll take a 10-minute break. Thank you. I'll need 10 Thank minutes. Thank you. Welcome back to our school board meeting for this evening. Uh, our next item will be an action item, 1001 Human Resource Substitute Bus Driver Report. Everybody's had a chance to review that? Yes. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the Human Resources and Student Bus Driver Report as presented in closed session? Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. 10.02 Health Policy. Health School health policy, Matt. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, members of the board executive team. For the record, my name is Matt Evans, supervisor of student services. I have before you this evening the uh, school health policy, number 531. This was just a, um, a, an update to reflect that the school health coordinator, which was employed by the Queen Anne's County Health Department, is now the school health supervisor employed by Queen Anne's County Public Schools. The changes were just to reflect that that change. Anybody have any questions on this? I have a motion. Oh yes, action. Um, this is Hoscope Policy 531. So the motion needs to be to accept the changes in the policy. And like you said, it's just changing from the mm -hmm. uh, state to school-based. Correct. Yeah. So, Mr. Smith, I make a motion to accept the changes in the school health policy 531 as presented by Mr. Evans. Second. A motion second. Any further discussion? All those here say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Evans. Uh, 3 gears to grant Good afternoon, President Smith, Dodge Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, my name is Michael Page and I'm a curriculum supervisor. And I also have with me tonight, Ms. Carla Poulin and for any questions in regards to facilities. Um, today, we are looking for approval of a contract with Becker Morgan Group to provide professional services to develop a prototype outdoor classroom, recommend site locations and considerations for constructing the prototype and electrical configuration and requirements at 14 of our Queen Anne's County Schools. The physical impact is $76,000. This was budgeted for through a grant, the Governor's Emergency Educational Relief II funds, and um, we are seeking your approval tonight. If you this, have any this, questions, please. This is a proposal to have our 14 schools looked at and what would be outside classrooms. Mm -hmm. Correct. We come up with this plan, then what? So this, and I would look to you for a little bit more in regards to this, but this is, this is to develop, to review all the sites, to make sure that where we're going to put these uh, outdoor classrooms is appropriate, um, that it is... Uh, we'll yeah. prepare the construction documents to allow us to do a competitive bid for all 14 sites, and that will get the ball rolling for the construction. 
okay, where's that money coming from? From the grant. From, from the, the grant. grant. Not in this grant? So all the funds that we're asking for are already in the gears two but grant this that we is received. This planning. Yes. yes. Correct. Which is part of the grant. It's part of the grant. Yes. And then we're going to do 14 possible location seat school. What is that going to cost? I know you don't know exactly yet, but it's not. It's going to cost ten dollars or two million. We don't know yet. And based on the supply chain issues, based on what's happening in the current construction market, we don't know. We are concerned that we'll be able to do all 14 buildings at the same time. Part of the reason to go through the planning process and to have these documents designed is so that if the funding only allows us to do 10 schools, we already have the plans to go back at a later time and do the additional schools. If we're not able to add the electric component initially, it's already designed so at a later time we could request funding, we'd be able to go back and add that component. So just to be clear though, the money to actually build them is part of the grant as well. Yes, ma'am. That's right. How did we come up with um, Becker Morgan Group to do the um, to do the RFP or whatever? What? Yes. So Becker Morgan Group is one of five that hold an indefinite quantity contract with us. So several years ago, we bid a an RFP. We put out an RFP and did a bid and selected five different groups that we would able to be able to go to for architect and engineering services. As long as the contract is under one hundred thousand dollars, it allows to pull allows us to pull with those five groups. So we requested pricing from all five for submitted, and then we took a look at who had given us the, the best price. What's the intent of this outdoor classroom? So, so the intent uh, came, uh, so if we take a step back in terms of where we were when this grant opportunity came out, this was in the heart of uh, COVID when we were shut down. Um, the intent was had several things. Uh, it was to provide an additional classroom outside of our, of our brick and mortar schools to get the students outside, get them fresh air, be able to conduct a classroom outside. Um, it also was written into the grant that we could utilize those uh, sites for or distribution of items, you know, so people weren't having to come into our schools. Um, it could be utilized for, uh, like I said, for COVID relief uh, type items, dis distribution of lunches, and so on. So there are multifaceted ways that we could utilize uh, these sites, but the main purpose was an another an additional instructional site outside uh, for for students to utilize, and not necessarily uh, to replace like the port portals that are outside portables that are outside some of our school no okay just making sure yeah these are these are open open areas outside so um, basically providing a shade and maybe some like we said like a screen or electrical outlet so that you can actually have a classroom outdoors so like our tent that we're in the, the, at the school we're doing it, outside dining yeah and that was I, that was a, an additional thing uh, item written into the grant was that if we it, it's it's essentially to expand our, our our schools to give another opportunity for right. for outside. us to take students outside um, they could be utilized for that purpose if needed, absolutely. Is that very similar to the high school's outdoor? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. How did we come up with that design? Did we... That was a tent. That, right, oh, they're, to... they're tents right now. Oh, right, so we, we weren't... It's right. not a permanent structure. This would be a permanent structure. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's so, going to be like a la carte menu where they're going to give us some proposals for each school. If we can only do 10, we do 10. If we don't do electric, but we know how to run electric or maybe do to put the conduit in something, mm -hmm. whatever we have to do. So it could come back to this board to make that decision on Correct. schools and what what we find the most highest and, and with Dr. Mm -hmm. Sandler's the best mm -hmm. value we Correct. find to utilize. So one we, thing would, I... we would prioritize the sites. We, we would also look at what the, what bids come in uh, for, for construction, see where we are in terms of funding and so on. And it really aligns, you know, our school district is um, I think one of two in the state that are all green, that, you know, all schools are green schools. This adds to that and, and obviously kudos to you for seeking out the funding. This 
was one award of very small amounts that were, were given out through the state of Maryland. And it, it, it really is just an extension of a classroom opportunity outside for students. And it fits nice with our science program to be able to get kids outdoors and explore and experiment and, and those types of things. So it, it's good all the way around that the money's coming for a given purpose, but we're gonna be able to have multifacets to use it with. And again, if we, cause the market is obviously very strained right now, if we can't do all 14, like we had originally thought, we'll have to prioritize and, and do that. But then additional funding may come up for other things. I mean, the supervisors are very good about getting out there and looking at grant opportunities and applying for competitive grants. And, th and this will be put out to get back at what time? When will, will we get reports from this? That was going to be my question. So when, what's the time? What's the timeline on on their study? How long are we going to allow them? How long do they have? Because I don't see it anywhere in this contract. We would like to be able to have these ready for bid in the March April timeframe so that we can start working on construction. Some of that is also um, indicative of what the grant says. We have we don't have an infinite timeline for to spend That's the grant. That's another question so I had. Is sure. what the, you know the, the grant? They give you a minute. Yeah. You know, little bit of time to get things done. Yep. The, the grant finalizes, uh, I believe it's September 1 of uh, 2022. 2023. Oh, wow. Uh, September 30th of 23. Oh, wow. Have that's a little bit of time, time. So but we, we want to go as quickly and That's to implement, uh, do this, and the spending of the money. Oh, Correct. Okay. But we're well, looking good. to get this back in early spring, get it, okay. and possibly have this done in spring and summer or something. Prob hope, I mean, that would we be the hope, and it also gives us some time. So if we have real challenges with the construction process, we have a little bit of time to maybe wait it out and take a look. Okay. Yeah. Any other board members have questions? So, no, Mr. Smith. It. Thank you. May I make a motion to uh, approve the contract with Becker Morgan Group for the purpose of pro uh, providing uh, development of the prototype outdoor classrooms. Uh, fiscal impact dollar amount of $76,000. Budget source uh, grant the governor's emergency re education relief to GEARS 2 funds. Second. A motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Happy holidays. Okay. Dr. Salins, we have a proposal for modification of the 21-22 school year calendar. Yes, um, President Smith, members of the board are bringing back to you the um, action item requesting a modification to the current year's calendar with an additional five um, half days. Those days uh, would really be looking at um, opportunities for the entire staff um, to promote self-care um, and just overall acknowledgement of um, their emotional well-being and um, and promote that so um, you asked that I survey uh, community and staff members and so we have done that mrs. power waters is here to present to you the data that was collected via that survey good evening president Smith dr. Salins board members um, at your last meeting, November 17th, you asked to collect data regarding um, stakeholders and the calendar, proposed calendar changes. And I have prepared a, a slide for you um, with the five dates that were proposed, uh, three of them being a day before a holiday break, and two of them being in March, which is a very heavy um, month with no days off. Um, we did receive, um, in 10 days, we received 1,868 replies, which was wonderful. I was ask, asked to extract the Queen Anne's County Public School emails from the entire list of uh, responses to get an accurate depiction of what the um, community members and families and parents said, as well as what our staff um, would like to have as far as calendar changes. Um, the first one is Wednesday, December 22nd, and the pie chart at the top shows that 82.2% would like to make this an early dismissal day, and 178 keep it a full day. Underneath, um, I, I spread out the responses as for, as for uh, the total response of 1,531 said change it to an early dismissal. Of, the, of that, 73% of those people were not Queen Anne's County public school emails and 28% were. Um, I'm gonna, I did the same thing for each day, Friday, March 4th, the same thing. Um, there's over 70% 
agreed that um, 889 people said that we should make it an early dismissal day. 520 said no, but the Queen Anne's County emails, 30% and 8%. Friday, March 18th, you can see the same thing. Total of 1,290 said make it an early dismissal and 549 said keep it a full day. And Thursday, April 14th, total of 1,440 said to make it an early dismissal and 420 keep it a full day. And finally, May 27th, before Memorial Day, total responses of 1,547 said please make it an early dismissal and 310 to keep it a full day. Conclusion, 70% or more of the respondents said they would like all five days to become early dismissal days. Queen Anne's County's employees made up no more than 38% of the total amount of replies. Early dismissal days prior to holidays offered the most support in changing the calendar, 82% before winter break, 77% before spring break, and 83% before Memorial Day. And here's just another uh, brief synopsis of the conclusion with the percentages. Does anyone have any questions? No. One thing is overwhelming that they want to do the five days. I see that. When you, and I, it's just a small point, but when you sit there and say only 30% were Queen Anne's County staff, we, you know, people can use any email. So we really, sure. don't, we really don't know sure. where it's, I mean, we know roughly where it's coming from, but exactly. that's not an exact thing because somebody, I sometimes use this email and sometimes I might use my personal email to do something. So right. that's know, correct. I, I would think even though it's overwhelming, the, the bottom line is 70, 80% of people want those days off. So I understand, I get that. That's correct. That was the most accurate way that we could mm -hmm. find to do it, yep. so I was asked to extract just yeah, those. I, I asked that question. I understand that. And I think fair, fair point too that we recognize that some of our staff members are also parents and, and mm -hmm. likely could have done it twice right. mm -hmm. from two different emails as a staff member and as a parent. Mm -hmm. So, but, we, you, but you know, it's hard to we couldn't extrapolate oh, no, no. that, and, and, unfortunately. And, 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 you know, you need yeah. to get that. But yeah, eighteen hundred and sixty-eight responded. You know, you, you have a lot. We have a thousand staff. We have um, parents. Well, we have 7,500 students, and just say two. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. It, I, people need to get involved, mm -hmm. and they're they're showing us that they want off, and you know that that's what it is. Uh, my other, you know, you, you, when you do this, and I'm I'm you know I've said it and been criticized for saying it. I'm not an opponent of half days. Mm -hmm. I find our students need to be in school. The best place are to have our students in school in front of our teachers. I also understand our teachers have had a hard workload and it's been tough on everybody the last year and a half, two years. So uh, I'm sympathetic, even though a lot of people don't think I am, and my wife will say that too. Um, <laughs> I wonder, and I guess it's too late now, if we could go to the state, statewide, and say, why don't we just take two days off the 180? And, you know, I don't know if it's possible, right. and it's, you know, I, it's not, but that would be another way to do it. And, but if that's what the people want, that, you know, that's actual proposal now, we gotta do something. So that's my two cents worth. Yeah, well, I understand uh, Dr. Salins's point of view, and then we've discussed it, and I, I got the climate in the school system, so as I stated before, this just confirms, and, and I'm for it. Any further discussion? Nope. Anybody? Callum? Nope. Amy? Can I make a motion to accept the recommended days, be put to half days that <clears throat> Dr. Salins has put forward? December 22nd, March 4th, March 18th, April 14th, and May 27th. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion second. No further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Power. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Right, Dr. Salins, you're two for two. <laughs> Dr. Um, Mr. Smith, members of the board, I bring an action item um, to you. Um, the purpose of this action item is to seek approval for the proposed staff stipends to be implemented in the December 24th pay period. Um, the request includes $1,000 net for full-time employees and $500 net for part-time employees. Um, due to obviously the continued challenges that we've had, um, we just talked about it, how staff members are uh, extremely 
certainly, um, you know, in a, in a position where it's just been tough. And we want to recognize that and we want to um, kind of show them that their dedication and their continued efforts, because we're not out of this yet, um, you know, we want to just promote that and that self-care is very important and we, we kind of want to focus on this being part of showing that we want them to um, take measures to steps to that self-care. Um, I really want to point out that um, Todd's here this evening from as a representative of the commissioners. Uh, we I can't stress enough the um, the strong partnerships that we have with the commissioners. Uh, I can't stress enough um, how thankful and appreciative I am. I, I you know, came to the commissioners, um, started to plant some seeds, started to talking to them quite a long time ago. They were extremely receptive, have been working um, diligently with me to bring this to the board um, tonight. So in, in working with them, um, they're willing to fund this request um, if it is approved by you this evening. Um, and then I do articulate in here what a full-time um, employee is defined as, just to make sure that that is very clear, um, and what a part-time employee is. And just a reminder that a part-time employee in this t particular case would not include employees who strictly receive extracurricular um, activities compensation. This, these are for um, our, our folks that are in our schools every day, um, and that's everybody. That's our custodial staff members. Um, you know, that's our, our school secretaries. Um, um, our teachers and such, um, and even uh, you know our bus drivers. Obviously, they're not in our bricks and mortar, but they're with us every day, working very diligently and very hard. Um, so I come to you with this proposal, asking for your action to um, approve this, so that I can make this um, um, partnership with the um, commissioners work for our staff. So. Um Point of information, Mr. Smith. I see actually two motions for this. Uh, one, a motion to have a letter sent to the county commissioners requesting the funds to, um, you know, to make this happen, and a second motion, if that first one passes, that when funding has been uh, given to us, if if and when funding is given to us by the county, that we have a motion already in place that says. Um, local impact dollar amount not to exceed 1.2 million budget source and state the budget source. Mm -hmm. That way, if it is funded, we have we already have a motion in place and approved. But we have to do, you know, put the, you know, horse before the cart and send the letter over. And I also I should have stressed this to begin with too. So the commissioners would be funding that stipend, uh, but the board would be responsible for the taxes on that stipend. That's what I'm seeing on right. Here. So that would be not to, to exceed $100,000, but okay. the commissioners, um, you know, would um, be voting on themselves um, to not to exceed the 1.1 well, million. My feeling is the way this is written up, we are, we are requesting, and we've had contact, but certainly commissioners have not officially they haven't voted on it. No. And they've got, to, they've got to do that at their next meeting, hopefully, I think, and Todd, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that we would request that the partnership with the county commissioners to do a stipend for our employees, that they would be funding 1.1 million, mm -hmm. uh, and then we, our fund balance would take away the 100,000. If it, then it would be approved. We're approving this and sending it to commissioners. If it, by some thing, they couldn't find that ways to do it, then have to come back to us. Mm -hmm. it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't succeed, right. that's yeah. all. That's accurate. But it still requires the two motions just in case. Well, oh, no, I wouldn't, in, yeah, because if it doesn't pass and we're, it, it's, it would Then the, the second motion is, is mute. There. If we, if they don't give us the money, the second motion is mute, but at least we have the motion in there that it will go through using the fund balance. Well, it's going to go through. If, we're, if, if it, well, we're going to send this to so they give us the money, it goes through. If it doesn't, they don't give us the money, it's going to be kicked back to us and we're going to have to come up with some other idea. You are not getting the point. No, I'm not. No. We have to give the authority to Dr. Salins and the staff to spend the money and how the other money was, how the 100,000 is coming out of fund balance. That is just. That's two separate motions. Whatever. Darren. That's all right. Sorry to drag you away. Yeah. Two separate motions. One to send the letter and the other to spend the money. Are you asking if you should do it that way? Yes. We're just making one whole motion. You could make it, I don't think it's that complex, you could make it one whole motion, but when you make one whole motion, anybody disagrees with one part of it, obviously. Correct. But there's no requirement either way. Okay, fine. I would, I move to uh, accept 
what am I writing here, the action, that the Queen Anne's County Board of Education approves the county funded restricted employee stipends grant for the December 24th pay period and the use of the fund balance not to exceed $100,000. Second. And, and, and the, okay, and second, and for discussion, uh, the local restricted funds not to exceed 1.1 million is being requested mm -hmm. through the county commissioners and uh, they will, Todd, is your next meeting next Tuesday? December 14th. December 14th. Mr. Smith, so we, are you adding to? I'm just asking Todd when, for information from me and his board, when they will make a decision. Our, our next meeting is December 14th. So we would know by December the 14th. Yeah. Is that Jane yes, and Tammy? I think Tammy. Mm -hmm. Dr. Salas. Yes. Is that Yes. To... Yes, we we have it all worked out okay. um, where we can behind the scenes prepare appropriately, and I if hope... we get the word, we can have it radio get right. it done. Okay. <laughs> the timeline we we definitely it's tight, but we got it. We we we're on it, and we've kind of back mapped it out to make sure that we can make it happen for that 24th paycheck. Any other fair, any discussion, everybody? Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead. Got a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, Mr. Thank Smith. You, Todd. So right. now that we have all now that we have Certainly. all agreed to do this. I make a motion to approve a letter be sent to the county commissioners to request the funding for the 1.1 for the purpose of staff stipends to be implemented at the December 24th, 2021 pay period. That way the letter will be sent. They have to have it in writing. That's my motion. Okay, second. Any further discussion to send a letter? All those in favor, aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We have, uh, we, at the beginning of our meeting, we did an amendment to our agenda. Mr. Pinder. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, Sid Pinder, chief operating officer. Um, I bring before you tonight um, several um, requesting approval of several contracts. Um, the first one is with Skyline Technology. Um, it's in the amount of over $25,000. Um, you had asked to be informed if we ever won over $25,000. So I just want you to know this is not a single purchase. This is multiple purchase orders over since July 1st. So um, if we have uh, a camera that goes out, we're replacing the camera. If we have access controls, we're replacing those. You know, we could have seven or eight cameras go out. It just all depends. So this amount here, we ex are going to exceed with every pair of some of the cameras that lightning struck. Obviously, we're gonna get reimbursed for that um, through our insurance, but the amount has exceeded $25,000. Total. Um, total, sir, yes, sir, since the start. So uh, we're seeking approval to move forward with um, the Skyline Technology um, Agreement. And I would say that it is through the Carroll County Public Network, um, which is what we piggyback on. And I'll say most counties uh, and local governments throughout the state of Maryland use the Carroll County Public Network uh, contract to piggyback on. So the, the total is over 25, but the invoices are... Totally yes, sir. The total of the invoices is over $25,000. There's no way for me to predict each year how much, how many cameras are going to go down or how many, um, you know, access controls. We do keep the cost down by letting Skyline remote into our system and try to troubleshoot that way. Um, but again, these are just purchase orders over the time that have accumulated to over $25,000. Um, funds are coming out of the FY22 operating budget um, and some from the Maryland Center for School Safety Grants. Okay. So when we get the, re the insurance reimbursement, it just goes back into that account? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any further questions? Uh -huh. Well, I'd like to make a recommendation that we, as a part of our motion, that we say not to exceed 50,000 and then they have to come back to us because it's, some of the money is coming out of our operating budget. And what, what I, you know, we took, I gotta wrap my head around this because we got a procurement policy of 25. 
Sid's, not, Mr. Pender's telling me that it's individual contracts or individual invoices totaling 25. I, at some time in there, when we go through our budget and everything else, I'd like to clarify how, how this goes down and maybe not do that 25 right now personally and just approve this, but try to make it a little more user friendly. Not necessarily by vendor then, by well, individual invoice is what yes, you're recommending. Right, individual, if, you know, it's, it's one thing if you're purchasing this whole package right now and it's over 25, yes, it needs to come in front of us, but if it's been a, since piecemealed. now, mm -hmm. piecemealed over it, we're two cameras here and two cameras there. Correct. Um, you know. Well, that's why I'm asking to at least put a, a spending limit on it at this time because of our budget. And I would rather just see it with just when we look at it to just chew it to the invoices um, and just go ahead and if you, if, you, if, you, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, Ms. Harper, Tammy, let's just do this one and then discuss okay. that other way to do something more efficiently from Dr. Salem's here is what we're talking about. Right, exactly. Maybe you could come back with yeah. some ideas. and Yeah, sure. And, uh, As I said, you know, then, looking at board, it by the invoice. Board, the board, you yeah. can send it to the board. They can look at it and we can put it on a future agenda to uh, maybe clean it up a little bit. Sure, because sure. You, you know, the other thing is things are changing so much now um, with technology and stuff and, you know, a couple cameras go down it's, and it's a safety issue, right. you know. Um, so we've got to, I think, look at things maybe just a little differently sometimes. But anyway, I have a motion and a second on this. Um, you do? Skyland, do I? No, I don't think I do. Okay, I'm looking for a motion. Well, I'm, I make a motion to approve the Skyline Technology Solutions to provide security cameras, assets, controls, A phones, ONSSI annual license, repair, service calls, upgrades, and other work as needed for the upkeep of our security and safety systems in the, um, well, we're not sure of the amount, and then. We're going to work on that in the future. Right. Well, we're <laughs> at the twenty-five right now, thousand dollars right now. It's over so. twenty-five thousand, which is why it came yeah. to us. Correct. All right. Second. Budget source. Um, the operating budget. Twenty-five FY twenty-two operating budget. And Maryland Center for School Safety Grants. Thank you. Go. Motion is second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Next one on here is a twenty-two Ford Transit. Yes, uh, board members, this is more of the traditional $25,000 single purchase item um, that you're kind of accustomed to. Um, seeking approval of a um, 2022 Ford Transit Connect um, STB from Apple Ford to replace a 2003 uh, Ford van um, that has been in service for over 18 years and we're having some uh, mechanical problems with it. Uh, this contract uh, would be utilizing the Baltimore more county government contract, which we've done for several other maintenance vehicles. Um, this would, van would be um, in our food service department, as you saw earlier, how many meals that we're producing um, this year. And those ladies are uh, riding around, you know, in a van that's it's seen its day. Um, so seeking approval uh, for Apple Ford, uh, the physical impact is $25,946.40. And this was identified as a budget source in our ESSER II um, that you've seen several times before. I see Baltimore County contract discounting Ford government price. Yes, discount. and I'll be honest with you, this is about the only route to go right now. We have tried to find one on the lot um, and it has been hard to come by. Um, and this is also the cheapest route. Um, I've heard everybody having trouble getting work vans and trucks and stuff. Yeah, I have two questions. Sure. One is, what do we do with the 2003? So, we don't, we use everything until its last leg. Um, so, we normally, we take the uh, vans that have a ton of high mileage on them, we assign them to a school, the custodians transport uh, furniture in them, cleaning equipment, those types of things. We use it till it is no longer <laughs> running. Um, sometimes we do, when we get to the point that, hey, it's costing us more to fix it, we um, put it on public surplus, which is a government contract. We then put it out to bid and people buy, just like they buy our buses, uh, they buy 
that. So, I mean, it goes through the whole life cycle um, of what we can get out of it. Yeah, we get, we'll add another for the insurance. Do we get fleet insurance? I know that I think State Farm offers fleet. Do we get fleet insurance? It, it, our insurance is through MADE, the Maryland Association okay. Board. And then second, what's with the solid steel partition? What's normally there? Nothing or? Well, there, you can have it either way. I would prefer to have it there for safety so when food service has to stop, they don't get slammed in the back of the head with the turkey sub coming through. So it's um. either nothing <laughs> or the solid steel, there's like no. So no, no, it, it's just, okay. yeah. Straight up, I just was worried about them, yeah. you know, driving and didn't want to yeah. put them in. And you know, I, I, I do like some of our vehicles are just very dated, and and it, and honestly, it's not a very efficient or effective way to just kind of keep continuing to limp along. I really like to look into leasing, um, which is a, a very efficient way. And then you have vehicles that are on a, a cycle that every 18 to two years are turned over. Um, you know, you can get to a point where they're turned over into such a fashion that you're almost breaking even on those because um, they're able to sell them for, mm -hmm. for more. Um, I'd like to look into that because I think that, you know, obviously keeping a vehicle that's from 2003, the amount of money that we put in there, we could have leased three or four over. <laughs> so I think it's time for us to really step back and evaluate. That's just going to take some time, um, you know, for us to, to look into it, to see the, the benefits of that. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it work successfully, though, and be advantageous in the long run to, to districts. So I think it, this might be a good opportunity to start looking into it for a, sure. a subsequent year. Sure. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any further questions? No. no. I have a motion. Motion to uh, approve the purchase of a 2022 Ford Transit Connect STB from Apple Ford to replace a 2003 Ford E250 van that's been in service for 18 years and is experiencing mechanical problems. Fiscal um, impact dollar amounts $25,946.40 and the budget source is ESSER 2 funds. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The next one. Okay, board members, um, this is uh, similar to the first one, um, seeking approval of W.B. Mason to provide personal protective equipment for all Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Um, basically, we're using, utilizing the lowest quotes uh, on the filing PPE equipment, um, adult mask, youth mask, wipes. Um, this is another one of those where it's not one single purchase. It's been several purchase orders of two, five, two thousand, five thousand dollars. Um, you know, and when we do that, we're always seeking the lowest price, um, and also how we can get the inventory. Um, WB Mason has really stepped up and came through for us during the pandemic. Um, so I'm seeking approval tonight um, because, like I said, it's over twenty-five thousand dollars from multiple POs and um, this money, some of it's coming out of operating FY22 operating budget and then also ESSER um, two funds. Board. Is this similar? I know we talked, um, you did a fantastic job of educating me about the for the supply closets. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the, the contract for the person yes, around. Nope. Is, so this isn't included in supply contract. No, this, this we were, okay, for the PPE, we were even able to find a cheaper price okay. um, for, for this. Um, some of the other vendors that we were using, prices were a little bit higher. You're thinking of the, the vendor management inventory for the um, custodians and all. This is totally different, basically you know, for COVID purposes. All right, so um, who keeps track of what we have at each school with this stuff? Because I was really impressed with Ms. that. Ms. Carla Pullen does. Okay, okay. <laughs> she spends a quite uh, a good portion of her time um, tracking that and making sure that uh, it was signed off for, um, making sure the quantities are correct and trying to look for any discrepancies. Are, a, are the burn rates going up way high? Why are they? Um, she does a, an excellent job with that. Great, thank you. Yep, yes ma'am. So how much money are, is going to be used from the operating budget? How much money do we have left in the ESSER funds? Can we put a certain amount of money aside for this? I mean, I don't want to keep over spending our budget. Do you know? So, uh, let's see, I'm pulling up in ESSER 2, the balance that we have in PPE. Let's see. I 
as of the end of November, the PP&E, it's 313000 Okay. I think we'll we really haven't overspent. We're yeah. just at that threshold of twenty five. That's what I'm saying. So we at least yeah. have three hundred thousand left yes. to be used. Yeah. Which we may need other things to besides just mm -hmm. masks. And like I said, it's it's really keeping the inventory of what goes out. Okay. You know, and if something happens within two or three days in the school saying, Hey, we need twenty more boxes, I mean Carla's like, Hey, what's what's going on here? What's so, you know, I, I think it's a pretty accurate burn rate of what she has. So we're thinking that the budget source really could just be the S or two funds. It sounds like we have the funds for that. For Correct, an S or two. Uh, the custodial supplies are, are more for out of the operating right. budget. Any further discussions? I hear a motion for approval. Mr. Smith, uh, may I make a motion to approve the WB Mason contract for the purpose of uh, providing personal protection equipment for the fiscal impact dollar amount of uh, over $25,000 budget source uh, S or two funds. Okay. And, and the janitor will have an operating budget. I have a motion. I have a second. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Said one more. Last one. <laughs> the last one I'm seeking approval on is for rain tree services. Um, they provide leak investigation services, caulking, roof repairs, preventive maintenance, inspections, um, and coating of the roofing systems for all Queens County Public Schools buildings. Um, Basically, we go out and seek. Um, this is another one where it's just multiple POs. It's we don't ever know with 1.4 million square feet of roof. You know, it doesn't take long for 2,500 here, 3,500 there. Um, you know, 10 leaks and you're over top of the uh, $25,000. Um, so again, this is multiple purchase orders. Um, the funding source for this is the FY22 operating budget. Um, and again, it's it's one of those where the PO is over $25,000, but it's just not for one single purchase order. It's for multiple ones. Can I ask Ms. Towers again, what um, what department is, is this under? Is this under repairs and maintenance of? Correct, this is gonna be under the maintenance contracts. And then how much do we have in that balance at, at the moment? I mean, barring having anything else coming in that we need done out of that department. Contract as a whole, it's uh, there's a balance of 447. Okay. 447,000? Oh, okay. thank you. Okay, any further questions? I have a motion. Mr. Smith, may I uh, make a motion to approve the Rain Tree Services contract uh, for leak investigation services, um, preventive maintenance, fiscal impact dollar amount over $25,000, uh, budget source FY22, operating budget. A motion of a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Sid. I, citizens form, I don't think we have anybody here right now. Annette, you want to say something? Thank you. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays. Uh, we've had some discussion. Our future board meetings, or our next work session, would be scheduled for 12-15, and our board, next board meeting will be January the 5th, 2022. Ooh. I'll get that wrong one more once. Okay. Now, 1215, uh, Dr. Salins, do you see, have anything on the agenda that we find earth pressing between now and the next board meeting? No, um, anything we have really, we can schedule for January. Any board members have any heartburn or anything that's necessary to have a meeting on the 15th? There. And I would entertain a motion to cancel our work session for December the 15th. So moved. Second, I have a second. Okay. Any, second. any further discussion? Thank you. Okay, we will not have a meeting. Our next board meeting. Call, call, call for vote, sir. You're just ready. Aye. 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 I'm sorry. 
Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm learning. Excited for that. Uh, our next board meeting will be January the 5th of next year. I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Uh, we have a few things. Happy to holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. yeah. And uh, have a pleasant evening. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.